The story that I am going to tell you is about political authorities and decision-making process. And as a minister advisor, I had the privilege to uh, take part this, in this uh, chapter of our life <laughs> of uh, Transantiago. As I told you, I, I, I took part in this, uh, in this case. I was an actor uh, in, in this case. And you know what I gained uh, of this experience, and I want to share with you today, is a better knowledge or a better understanding of our political authorities, their interests, their room of maneuver. And I think uh, uh, when, before working in the Ministry of Transport, I knew about the optimal solutions and the second best solutions. But working in the Ministry of Transport, I knew the range of the suboptimal solutions. And I think understanding how suboptimal solutions are, uh, we can design and propose uh, better policies. So in 2009, Transantiago, our public transport system, uh, integrated public transport system, had a huge deficit of around uh, $500 million per year. That is half of the cost of the system. And the government had already used all the possible sources to fund this deficit, um, loans to public firms, loans uh, to the uh, Inter-American <coughs> Development Bank, even a constitutional additional emergency fund. It was used to fund this. And you know, we have a lot of earthquakes, and this fund <coughs> was for earthquakes. And after six months after this uh, story, we had a very big earthquake. <laughs> so, uh, so you use this fund for catastrophes. And the uh, opposition wanted to show that we were using the, that money because uh, the Transantiago was a catastrophe. The financial instability uh, was threatening of leaving six mi uh, Santiago, six million uh, people city, without public transport. And one way to, to reduce this uh, gap was um, increase the fare. But the fare uh, uh, um, had to be increased uh, to, to double the fare. So uh, uh, that was unthinkable. And also, the users were outraged because the very beginning of Transantiago was very chaotic. And after two years, beginning in 2007, we are talking about 2009, uh, uh, was very chaotic. And although uh, many of the problems were solved, uh, we still had a lot of uh, quality problems. So, uh, it was unthinkable increasing the fare. And the opposition coalition was uh, on the balcony uh, uh, watching this and taking advantage of this situation because we uh, were going to uh, uh, have uh, elections, uh, presidential and legislative elections uh, at the end of 2009. And it was for the first time in 50 years that a right-wing party could uh, uh, take the office. The, the context, what I am going to do, the roadmap will be, I am going to introduce a little bit the, the, the topic, formalize the aim, the, uh, show you the method and the data. Then I am going to briefly describe the public and private interests in regulation. These are the theories that uh, uh, I am going to use as an analytical framework. And then I am going to start to present you the case study. First, a, a describing or analyzing the Chilean legislature, and then the subsidy bill process. Yeah? And, and I want to uh, uh, finish with some comments uh, based on the, 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 the experience with this case study. The aim of this work was explain how the Chilean public transport market became subsidized and 
uh, and analyzing to what extent the public and private interests uh, uh, shaped uh, the, the, the subsidy bill during the legislative process. The, 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 the debate uh, is about public rigorness in our public policies. So on the one hand, we have a, a, a school of thought of uh, claiming public interest. Uh, the state is concerned about market failures. The state is concerned about uh, maximizing social welfare. On the other hand, the, there is uh, a school of thought, Chicago Boys, uh, claiming uh, that, um, that uh, nobody is concerned about uh, social welfare. Uh, the state, government, legislature, are concerned about uh, maximizing political support. Um, uh, industries are concerned about maximizing uh, uh, profits. Yeah. So the question the f f uh, uh, that, that I posed was, why did legislators finally approve this subsidy? Was a genuine interest in maximizing the social welfare, or on the contrary, gaining more political support in their district favoring interest groups? The method was a case study taking uh, the, the period between 2007 uh, uh, until, two, uh, until 2015. Yeah? Uh, data and information, the main source of information were the official congressional re re uh, records with the detail of the discussion both in, uh, on the floor and also in the committees and the votes. Also, the, uh, I conducted some interviews with some actors that participated in crucial events. Uh, I, I used uh, transport uh, information uh, in different districts. I used a book written by the minister. You are going to meet him <laughs> in two, some more slides. Uh, and field observation because I was there. So very, very roughly, uh, uh, public interest is concerned, says that there is just uh, uh, public interest in regulation issues, says basically that there is only one actor, the state. Government, legislature are part of the state. And uh, they are focused on maximizing the social welfare. Let's think in terms of microeconomic social welfare, OK? But on the other hand, we have the Chicago School, very old but very seminal, the work that we developed in that uh, period that says that uh, the government and the, uh, and the legislature, the legislator are concerned about maximizing political support. Uh, uh, they could maximize political support uh, uh, favoring the industry or favoring the consumers. Uh, the fa favoring the industry, they gain money for the campaign. Favoring the consumers, they gain votes. Industry is focused on maximizing profits, and consumers are uh, focused on maximizing uh, consumer surplus, the, the, the part of the social welfare concerned with consumers. And these two theories are uh, very extreme standpoints. Um, um, on the one hand, this is very naive, absolutely. On the other hand, this is uh, in, in this, according to this theory, the world is full of corrupt people. Uh, everyone pays uh, bribes to, to get uh, anything. Uh, so there are two extreme uh, 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 theories, but the, the, the application of these theories show or have shown uh, that there are uh, reality, we know, is something more in between. And for example, a good uh, case study uh, concluding that the uh, prevailing 
theory explaining that case is in this book. It's a case written uh, about the uh, uh, railway regulation in the 19th, 19th century in Britain. And the other example is uh, this book regulating infrastructure. There is a case of a uh, bus regulation in Sri Lanka showing the capture, both uh, the capture of the legislators and uh, the bureaucrats. OK. The Chilean legislature. OK. Um, <coughs> I use this uh, background because it is quite uh, useful. I read uh, in a book by Stephen Gleister, Transport Policy in, in Britain, uh, to, to explain this. Uh, the pitch, in this case, uh, were, there were two pitches, the Chamber of Deputies and the Senate. Yeah? Um, the rules of the game were that uh, the, the first discussion <coughs> was in the Chamber of Deputies. Then, uh, discussion both in the Transport Committee and also on the floor of the Chamber of Deputies. <laughs> Once approved the bill, uh, uh, it uh, goes to the Senate. Then, same process, committee, floor. And if there is disagreement between this version of the bill and this version, the, the bill has to return to this chapter. Okay? Rules of the games. All the time they are voting in general or voting for each part of the specific part of the, of the bill. The actors playing, the fundamental actors, the, those who with the, with the power to vote, were legislator of concertacion, a center-left coalition that was ruling in, that, uh, in those years. And uh, on the other hand, there were two, uh, one coalition, Alianza, right-wing coalition, and this party that uh, came from here. Yeah, precisely because of the problems of Trans Santiago. Yeah. So um, these are the parties. Uh, this is the master, the Minister of Transport. One day I would like to have the my skin as thick as him. Very <laughs> thick skin. And this is uh, Sebastian Piñera, uh, who uh, was the candidate for the president of Chile. And these guys were the leaders of, the, of this legislator, were uh, managing the, the work with them. Also, there were uh, interest groups presenting their points in the committees, transport committees. And we, we have uh, uh, scholars. The, the, these guys were the only ones uh, advocating for the public interest, some of them doing with more feet on the ground, others uh, pontificating and saying, this is a good policy, but the ministry is not doing well. Yeah? But the only ones advocating for public interest. And on the other hand, we have the buses in regions, urban buses in regions, share taxis and, and coaches, interurban uh, transport. OK? Uh, in the Chamber of Deputies, this is left wing, right wing, concertacion in the left wing, regional party and alianza in the right uh, wing side. And there was one issue dimension important always, which is the ideological issue. But in this case, was very relevant this other dimension, the spatial dimension, regions and Santiago. And it is interesting because in transport, uh, transport is, uh, transport works on the space. 
So uh, in general, uh, acts uh, uh, do not make differences uh, among regions. But in this case, was a uh, special, uh, so there were uh, differences among regions in the treatment in the bill. You see, so um, there was uh, <coughs> just one more legislator on this side of, of the table than here. This is the Chamber of Deputies, and in the in the Senate, this was a situation. Yeah, we were tied. An important point to stress here is the unbalanced representation of legislators. Because we had a mess and crisis in Santiago. But for example, in Santiago, uh, 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 lives 40% of the Chilean population. But in terms of uh, senators, we have just 10%. In terms uh, in deputies, we have 30%. So for solving the financial problem of Santiago, we have to do something with the regions. Otherwise, uh, uh, the, this bill uh, would not uh, work. OK, so these are the events. First of all, there was a, a crisis. In February 2007, uh, uh, we had a crisis. There is a lot of uh, uh, information, analysis about the crisis of Transantiago. But what happened that is that we had a lack of buses. There were 4,000 buses. But the amount of uh, buses, the right amount of buses was 6,000, a few buses few services, the, the, the coverage of the system had, be, had been reduced. The, a radical change in, in the road map, so, uh, and without much information to the users, so there was a mess. People didn't know what uh, bus uh, they had to take, and, and also they had to wait a lot, and they had to fight to get into a bus was a really, really mess. And imagine this situation every day on TV. The government uh, approval declined uh, dramatically. And was a very, very uh, uh, important social problem. So the, 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 the ministry uh, working here was fired, and uh, René Cortázar uh, uh, was appointed uh, as a Ministry of Transport in April uh, uh, 2007. Uh, that is a, a crucial moment, because nobody wanted to be Minister of Transport. And this guy is a tough guy, yeah? uh, uh, with a lot of uh, public avocation. So he said, I'll do it. So what uh, the, the problem, the financial problem, we had the social problem, but also uh, the financial one with the deficit that I, I already said, $500,000. Uh, uh, so, and uh, Mr. Cortazar, what proposed was uh, a bill. And the rational number one for the bill that is this is not written on the bill, but was the rationale, that was unthinkable, a fair increase in the middle of the crisis. Uh, the rationale number two, and this is the rationale of the bill, was funding the student fare in public transport uh, in the whole Chile. What's the point here? We had that um, in, uh, in Chile, uh, students pay uh, a, lo a lower uh, fare than adults, <coughs> one third of the fare of adults. So adults are uh, subsidizing the lower fare of students. So, uh, and that uh, system had a problem, and that, is, that was a national problem, that uh, was uh, the incentive. Uh, 
for adults to use public transport and probably to move to car. So here there is uh, the, the rationally the rationale of efficiency for for this uh, bill. Uh, but also there was another rational or sub-rational uh, related to equity because that adults that were really paying the, the, this uh, lower student fare were low and middle income people. So this was the uh, rational of the bill and this rational applied to uh, the, the whole system. To, uh, to the whole chill. What uh, the bill worked, it created a permanent subsidy and a transition subsidy, okay, uh, between 2010 and 2014. During that period, it was expected to uh, gradually increase the fur and reducing, gradually reducing the, the, the subsidy. So, um, so there was a permanent a transition subsidy. And then that money was distributed 50-50. Uh, was uh, funny because I had an intervention here with the former minister, Andres Gómez Ló. We were uh, advisors of the minister. And we started to make an estimate of the cross subsidy in, 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 in different regions of Chile. And was incredible, was 50-50. <laughs> Everyone uh, told us, no, you, uh, you manipulate this in your kids and blah, blah, blah. No, it was more or less 50-50. So 50-50. Uh, some part of the money was, uh, uh, went to the concessional system with uh, fair integration. This is the case of Transantiago. Yeah? So this is the money for Transantiago. But in the case of regions, the money had a, a, a little bit more complex uh, distribution. Uh, 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 we had some system in regions, five cities, with a, a, uh, with a regulation, not integrated fair, but with a regulation without integration. And uh, uh, in, in these systems, what we do or what the bill proposed was decreasing the the, the fare and compensate the the pass operator. And in the other uh, cities, uh, uh, there were non-concessional systems. So here, the ministry uh, gave the money to pass operators. This is the world of one bus, uh, one bus, one one man. This is the, that uh, world. Also, this money, uh, also there was money for uh, subsidizing mm. services in isolated area, particularly uh, the southern of Chile, uh, subsidizing school services in rural areas and uh, in extreme regions. Yeah? And also, if uh, there was some money left, uh, that uh, uh, had to be invested in infrastructure for public transport. It's very simple, I, I want to explain. The, the, the idea was that in the current situation, uh, this is the situation with the cross subsidy. Yeah. So the point was reducing, think as both students and adults uh, were paying uh, as adults. So uh, you uh, determine the, uh, a new fare, and then you uh, set again the student fare, one third of this, and then this amount of money uh, wo uh, was the money of subsidy required. So as you can see, we were not giving more money to the firms. We were just compensating with subsidy the less revenue that we, they were going to receive. Okay? The central episode of this story 
is when the bill started to be uh, uh, discussed in the Chamber of Deputies, then in the Senate, and then in the Chamber of Deputies. And, and all this happened in the middle of the uh, political campaign, as I told you. And, and a very significant fact was what the transport minister said, the right-wing parties are squeezing the lemon of, a, of this failed policy. So a, let me show you. Oh, sorry. Uh, and in this stage, the interest group were heard uh, uh, in the transport committees. So what happened? When uh, this is the result of the votes uh, in the Chamber of Deputies, so as you can see, uh, blue are in favor, red against. The, 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 uh, there was a, a perfect party discipline. All of the concertation, um, all of the concertation deputies vote in favor, and all uh, legislators of uh, right-wing parties vote against. And the result of this was that uh, favor uh, won by uh, the, the the different was one uh, uh, one vote in, uh, for. Uh, for uh, for uh, votes uh, in favor of, of this bill, you know. So, in this stage, what happened was a, a, a high level of party discipline. This was a crisis for the government, and uh, the government aligned uh, their uh, their legislator, saying. You have to behave. Do you want to go to the next election? You have to behave this. Okay? Was uh, um, uh, it was a very tense uh, day that one. Uh, and what uh, it does not appear here is what happened with this dimension. And quantitatively, uh, paying attention to the votes. Uh, there was not a difference uh, uh, in terms of Santiago and regions. But if you see and study the discussion in, in uh, that uh, had law, the legislator, you see that was very, very relevant. The point was that in regions, there are a lot of shared taxes. Shared taxes are uh, in many cities, the, the most uh, used uh, uh, mode of transport, and also they are a very uh, strong uh, interest group in regions. So, uh, so uh, and the bill and shared taxes do not have a, a student lower fare. So they, uh, they, they, they they were not able, they, they, there was not a subsidy for them because they did not have a, a, a student fare. So, but they were complaining. Okay, uh, you are giving money to the buses, but you are not giving money uh, to me. No, but you are not, uh, you do not have the student fare. Anyway, I want money, I want money. So, uh, the, the legislator had to, uh, was like a Hamlet, to be or not to be, to support, to be, to behave, to, to be aligned with the party, uh, with, with the order of the party, or to support the, uh, the regions and their share taxes uh, of the regions. So finally, what prevailed was the, the discipline to, to the party. Yeah. So in the next stage, 
in the Senate, once the <coughs> bill was approved with just one vote, in the Senate, there was an, uh, ah, I forgot one important point. Here, there was technical agreement between uh, the technical teams uh, of right wing and left wing, technical agreement. So, but the right wing coalition did not want to vote in order to squeeze the lemon. Yeah, w uh, you are going to pay for this, and you are going to, I am going to use this to show you that you are incompetent, and, and that way I can uh, win the elections. So that is uh, an important, in the Senate, there was an agreement between the transport minister and the Alianza presidential candidate, because if he were going if he was going to be uh, president, uh, 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 he had to, to, to solve the, the problem as soon as possible, otherwise the, he would inherit the, the problem for, for, for his uh, term, for his period. So what, uh, what was the agreement? Increase of subsidy 20%. A transition subsidy extended from 2011 to 2014. Shared taxes were excluded of subsidy. Yeah, these are the more relevant uh, changes of a part of the agreement. So, hence, when uh, 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 the votes in the Senate uh, this time. Uh, give uh, an approval uh, uh, to the um, uh, to the bill yeah so uh, both uh, concertación and alianza uh, legislator vote uh, in favor of the uh, in favor of the bill uh, with one exception yeah and <coughs> in the when the bill return to the the Chamber of Deputies uh, was more or less the same stuff. Uh, what did is later finally approve this bill? Was a genuine interest in maximizing social welfare or on the contrary gaining more political support by favoring interest group? I think what prevailed was uh, the public interest. Why? Because the, the bill, the origin of the bill is a social crisis. The rationale for the subsidy bill was funding a student for in public transport. Uh, there were uh, robust uh, 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 arguments of efficiency and equity. And the, 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 the text of the bill was consistent with this rationale. And also, when there was the agreement between transport minister and the Alianza's president candidate, shared taxes, that was the only part of the private interest that could, uh, uh, could uh, take a uh, good influence uh, to the legislator, they were excluded. So, uh, so a private interest uh, does not apply in this case, does not explain. Later events. OK, we solved the crisis of Transantiago 2009. OK, now you have to start to use the subsidy. OK, but what happened? The next two governments, uh, each government uh, has had at least one bill asking more subsidy. Any, anyone wants to eat the frog of increasing the fur. Yeah. So, uh, uh, and in each time the, in the act, uh, uh, there are more concessions to interest group. So for example, uh, in these bills, uh, uh, there is more subsidy, but also subsidy for share taxes this time. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's 
for, for investment in new cars, but subsidy for share taxes. Here was subsidy for share taxes in regions. This time was subsidy for share taxes in Santiago as well. So, uh, and then investment in projects uh, not related in, uh, to public transport. Mm -hmm. So, and what happened uh, in, in, at least in this period? Uh, the period of, uh, of the government of Michel Bachelet with uh, Minister Bortazar, the fare just increased once. Yeah. And the, uh, this is the, uh, um, the approval of the government uh, in public transport only. And with the reforms that uh, Cortazar was implementing, the approval was increasing, okay? But when the new government started, uh, uh, there were uh, many uh, increases of fare, one per <coughs> month. And the popularity of the president started to decrease. So I really I remember perfectly in this uh, uh, when the president called the minister saying, okay, we have to stop with this. Uh, ask more money to the Congress right now, <laughs> okay? And th these were the results. This was the, let's say, let's say the, the first, uh, the, the first bill, the 2009 bill, okay? Uh, and with some additions in 2011 and 2012. But this is the second important uh, bill uh, that uh, in, uh, substantially increased the, the, the subsidy. And then this is the third government, and, uh, and here I, in part is uh, a child of me, uh, uh, there was another increase in uh, in the subsidy, and and you can see are uh, very very significant two two thousand millions dollars here in, in Chile our uh, budget our GDP is two hundred fifty million dollars so. And uh, here I graph what I, I told you. Um, our uh, first bill was located here uh, with high levels of public regardness uh, uh, and a lot of uh, party discipline. But this was just for the crisis. For, uh, for, uh, for in 2013 and 2015, the, uh, the, the, the government had to concede to give subsidy for share taxes in, in, in order to, to get the approval of the project. So <coughs> it, 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 the, the, this policy started to be less suboptimal than it was at the very beginning. So I would like to stress uh, three points with, with, uh, with this case. First, the very story, you know? This is uh, um, this story is related to with a crisis. This story is different. When, once I heard uh, a, a, a colleague in a conference saying, "No, we have to do like uh, Chileans that take uh, that take uh, awareness." of the importance of public subsidy <laughs> and they build an advocacy coalition to, and there was a policy entrepreneur to, that uh, was fighting for resources? No. This is result of a mess, a, a crisis, a catastrophe. Yeah? Uh, this is not uh, Ken Livingstone with the congestion charging we, uh, that uh, was a good example, a policy entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, the second point I would like to stress, the importance uh, of this dimension. I think it's quite relevant for our uh, transport policies. 
in, in this way we can uh, challenge the status quo. We, uh, here the legislature no, is not just a matter of being right or left. There are uh, guys coming from regions, guys coming uh, from Santiago. This was like uh, uh, Lincoln. It's not just Democrats and Republicans. It's pro-slavery or against slavery. And then uh, he unlocked the conflict. I think paying much more attention to this kind of dimension in the projects that we are uh, working uh, uh, can help us to um, uh, unlock many problems. Um, this was a, 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 a I talk with the uh, legislative advisors, lawyers, and they told us, no, this is, is particular of this policy. And I think uh, one could, uh, we, we, we should be uh, issue dimension seekers. <laughs> for, for, uh, that is the learning of this. And finally, uh, okay, as I told you, this was the result of a crisis uh, uh, because we had a crisis, we had a policy, but once uh, in a meeting with the president, uh, we had a very tough problem with one of the firms that was not behaving. And I remember he said, you know, let's organize a crisis. Let's prepare the crisis with the media team. Uh, let's control the damage. And I can eat, or maybe I can, uh, not me, but the Ministry of Transport, you are going to eat the frog of the crisis, but then we are going to be able to present uh, a bill to solve this. So it's not just uh, exogenous crisis. You can create the crisis, but be careful of that. The second point, interesting, is the leadership of uh, Ministro Cortázar. And if I had to define him, I would say he's a technopole. He's a kind of minister combining technical knowledge with political knowledge. He uh, um, is PhD in, in labor economics uh, at MIT, a very prestigious guy, um, but also uh, has been member for many, many years. Uh, uh, he has been a politician for many, many years. In fact, he was a uh, Ministry of uh, Work in the first government after Pinochet. That was quite tough negotiating with the union. So a very uh, prepared guy in technical terms and in political terms. and. And the other point is the before the crisis. Were we prepared for a public transport subsidy policy? <coughs> at all. Not at all. Not at all. And we had the learning by doing here. What uh, this was not the case with other policies. For example, we had to reform the state in 2003, and we were there were think tanks with, uh, that, have, uh, that were prepared to advise for that kind of reforms. So what is the message is something that I read in a book by Kingdom, very known, uh, uh, that says people trying to advocate change are like surfers waiting for the big wave. You get out there, you have to be ready to go you have to be ready to paddle. Uh, so I think that is the, the work that especially you <laughs> have to do. Be, uh, be, uh, be prepared for the, for the wave uh, and then help us, us when we were dealing with this. So uh, with this uh, relaxing, peaceful slide, I say thank you very much. And that is. <laughs>